Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Pentacast Podcast. My name is Andrew Bella. Alongside me is my good friend, Ryan Sellers. Howdy, howdy. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, me and Ryan are back in studio here in southern Georgia, where we belong, folks. Amen to that. Ryan, how you been, man? Splendid. Splendid. It's been a little while since I've seen you. Yeah. You know, after we got back from Virginia, and uh, by the way, we hope that each and every one of you enjoyed that podcast. I want to say thank you to Brother Danny Reed and family for just welcoming, welcoming us and his church. So, it was outstanding. Yes. Such loving people. Yeah. Opened up their home. Fed us a good steak. Yes. Yes. Had well, a, Had a blast. Yeah. Ever since we got back, though, Ryan deserted me. He didn't even <laughs> want to talk to me the other night when I was at his restaurant because I guess we just spent too much time together. Well, I'm still a little bit traumatized. From what? Well, you know, we, we stayed in a, in a hotel room, separate beds. But uh, somebody crunk up a chainsaw in the middle of the night. It was fair warning. Yeah. I told you and... Your your poor wife. (laughs) (laughs) I actually asked you um, before we even hit record, I was like, look, man, uh, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow (laughs) and uh, I need to ask you something. And you're like, go ahead. Ryan, do you think I have sleep apnea? Uh (laughs) I said, no, I don't think... I know you have sleep apnea, so... Anyways, so, we had a good time. It man, was, it was really good. It was probably the fastest trip to uh, to Virginia and back, but yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, we did. Man, it was gorgeous. Um, Lots of coffee. Yes, Lord, yes. I just thought it was neat to have the the podcast outside. Yeah. Um, oh, it it was. The scenery was beautiful, as you could see on the video. You couldn't see everything, of course, but mm-hmm. it was just beautiful country. Yeah. Beautiful people. Yeah. Just good-hearted folks. Yeah. Uh, honestly, um, uh, you know, we talk a lot on the podcast of the family of God. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, one thing that I thought of after leaving them, to us, they were total strangers. And uh, they, they welcomed us into their home. Their kids were just yeah. a hoot. Oh, yeah. You know, you and I went solo, and we yeah. um, made it made me miss my kids. Yeah. Uh, really bad uh, hanging out with the the kids from the church and um, you know especially the the girl that asked me and yeah. you at the Q and A yeah. at Heritage. Do you ever read the Bible <laughs> or open it? And do you ever open it? Re- read read from a, it. Read a verse or whatever. Yeah. Um, Sometimes. So I, we gotta <laughs> take a picture with her. Oh yeah. Um, she loved it. <clears throat> but we talk a lot about the family of God, and one one amazing uh, fact. It's not an opinion, it's a fact. One amazing fact of the family of God is this, that you can meet complete strangers, but if you have that kindred spirit, it's like you've known them your whole life. Absolutely. And so whenever I left Virginia with you Monday, which was on Labor Day, man, I just, I missed them because I was like, you know, I don't don't really know them, but they're just salt of the earth people. Yeah. And, you know... You, I, we try to steer away from the negativity of the world because that's what our platform is, is just kind of shining a, a positive light to this world. And um, I wish more people would do that. But you know what? Even in the hills of Virginia, there's good people living a godly oh, yeah. life. And and there are down here and there there is everywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think, uh, to your point, we get so caught up in, in our little rut, you know, waking up every morning, going to work, going home, going to bed, waking up every the next morning, going back to work, you know, making it to church ten minutes late, me, uh, if I'm lucky, yeah. <laughs> and uh, just go, 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 until you fail to realize that life is far more important than your stupid routine. Yeah, for sure. And that there are people all over this country and all over this world that are just like us, no matter how different we are. Yep. We are unified in that we are serving the same God and we're both trying to make it to heaven. Exactly. And Ryan just gave us a, a great introduction to what we're going to be talking about today. But first, we have a new patron. Yes, Jordan Peach. Glad to have you. Thank you very much, Jordan. Very much. Thank you very much. We really appreciate all the support uh, to each and every one of you patrons. And uh, thank you so much, Jordan, uh, for joining 
uh, this great cause, and uh, you patrons made it possible for Ryan and I to travel up to Virginia sure and to did. get the uh, testimony and the story of Danny Reed. Uh, if you have not listened to that episode, it was our latest episode other than this one. I encourage each and every one of you to go back and listen to that episode. We have a survivor of the Virginia Tech massacre in our movement. Yeah. And I think that's wonderful because of his story. But, you know, what he made me think of when we first heard about him was how many others have um, these incredible yeah. stories that, that, that not necessarily they're hiding. It's just they're waiting to be asked, Yeah, what's God done for you? Exactly. You know? Yeah. And so I was so thankful that we got to tap into his story. Yeah. And just the way it all came about, you know, we went to Savannah several months ago now, and his um, daughter and and her husband and their kids were there. Obviously, she called us, the, the youngest one called us out on our scripture reading. But just by going there, A, that was a blast for you and I. We had such a good time. Yes, sir. And then that opened the door. Maybe even that day they text you and said, hey, we've got a story you need to hear. Yeah. And that was pretty awesome. Yeah. And and while we're away, you know, it's like um, some of you wish uh, the mics probably were never turned off. Me and Ryan, there are days that we wish they were never turned on. Mm-hmm. And um, then there's those, those unique days where it's like, man, if I just had a microphone to record this. Yeah. Everybody's had that thought. Everybody has mm-hmm. had that situation. And when we were up in Virginia, if you remember, on our way to John and Pam's house, which... You know what? They, they probably were hiding Osama bin Laden this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, they could. They could have hit him well. Yes. But while we were going Beautiful. to their house, gorgeous, man. Beautiful. Oh, John, made me I've, envious. I've shown everyone your house and, <laughs> and their, the bear prints on the door. Yeah, I know. <laughs> man, we were in the woods. But even driving with John and getting to meet him, he's such an amazing guy. Yes. I, w- I even leaned over and I was like, man, I wish we had microphones turned on right now because he's got an incredible story yes, he does. of how God's helped him yes. in his life. And he's not afraid to tell it. No. You know? And that's no. what he prayed about. You know, yeah. I, w- I want an experience that, I'm, that I can not share, afraid to say, that I'm share. not afraid to share. Yeah. And God gave him that. Yeah, exactly. And he shared it. Yeah. So thank you, John, for that. But also that's that kind of brings us mm. to... What we do here on the podcast is just trying to get as many stories out there as we possibly can mm-hmm. to show people that God is real and that he loves his creation mm-hmm. and that he's still working for us. We just have to choose to see it. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> absolutely. So going back to what you were talking about with breaking the cycle mm-hmm. of our day-to-day lives, which you and I are busy guys, Yes, and um, it's always good to just break the cycle What's really good, though, is when you break the cycle, you know, going on vacation is always fun, Mm -hmm. and uh, getting away from the daily routine is always fun, but it seems to me like like this past trip when we went to Virginia, it was kind of even out of the ordinary for time that you and I would usually take off, you know, and um, it really made me reflect as like like what you said, and um, that's going to be the topic for today's episode. We're going to just talk about reflection. And I think that's a good word for the episode is reflecting on what your life has been about, reflecting on what has taken place in your life. Yeah. Because if you're not careful, the rat race that you're referring to happens so quickly, you'll yes. wake up one day and go, where's my life went? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's very important that you focus on what's important. You, and that's multifaceted. You know, you've got to make a living. Of course, you got bills to pay. You got to keep lights on. You got to take care of your family as the as the man of the house. However, there's more to life than that, mm-hmm. you know. And I am the number one most guilty of falling into that rut and just, like I said, wake up every morning, go to work, get home in enough time to bathe the kids and go to bed, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you, you're looking at the calendar month after month after month after month. You know, a week is no time. Zero. And then it's month after month after month after month. And then it's year after year after year. It's just yeah. vanishing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as a parent of young kids, it frightens me that I'm stuck in this rut 
and my kids are getting older every day. And then one day they'll be grown and gone, and I'll be, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. You know? You, well, you and I had a lot of time to talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know what's great about this is everybody's like, man, Andrew and Ryan are so close on this <laughs> podcast. They just talk about all their secrets and everything and just drink coffee and mm-hmm. just, you know, warm up by the fire. But you know what, guys? We – how many times do we bust open this door like, all right, turn the coffee machine uh, no. on, charge yeah. the cameras, let's get after it, we got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of funny to me while the cameras are rolling, you know, it yeah. it gives off this uh, aura <laughs> or this <laughs> sense of, man, they got it all together. Negative. I can promise you, you're not looking at Martha Stewart, Okay. <laughs> And you're not you're not looking at Chip and Joanna, okay? Uh, uh, we don't have it all together. Negatory. Um, they don't either, but they really don't. <laughs> yeah, they don't. I mean, good lord, they fixed a few houses uh-huh. and restored some grain bins in Odessa, Texas, and now yep. they're famous. You know, and my wife made me go there the yep. other day when we were back at home. And I mean, I get excited about a Bucky's, but I mean, <laughs> come on, they're just Detail. some silos there in Waco yep. in the ghetto. Yeah, but it's pretty cool, I guess, if you're a woman, but. <laughs> Anyways, so like we give this uh, this idea that we just we have it all together and we're trying to help each other figure out their lives, but um, really we're trying to figure it out as we go. Yes, sir. You know, at, at a doctor's office, which you're familiar with the medical field since you're a part of it, um, they'll say such and such practice or such mm-hmm. and such practice. And so what I've always said was, you know, they are in practice, mm-hmm. and I'm a practicing Christian. Mm-hmm. I'm in practice. There's yeah. there's days when I have to learn uh, new yeah. techniques and, and keep going. But the main thing, like you've always said, and, and what we've kind of reiterated even today, is enjoying the journey. Enjoying, yes. and, and when you reflect on what has already transpired in your life, it'll allow you to really enjoy your life. I was saved, I I believe, 13 years ago. Now, that seems like yesterday. Yeah. And really, it it, it does. It feels like yesterday. But when I look in the mirror, I I see a 30-year-old man Mm -hmm. who's definitely not old. He's definitely balding. But I, I see somebody who can look at his life, and I'm talking about me right now, who who has accomplished a lot in 13 years. Yeah. You can look at your life. When I first met you on the farm, mm-hmm. we're going to mention his name, Fred's Farm. Yep. Um, Shocker. Met him. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> met Fred, or met you on Fred's Farm, sitting at the uh, dinner table. Uh, this was back in the day when I wasn't eating much at, at Janice's house, but that soon changed. Yep. As it did everywhere I go. Um <laughs> But I sat there and watched you, and I heard such and such, uh, yeah, such and such said, blah, blah, blah. Who's this Ryan guy? Oh, he goes to the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ryan's not going to be here. You know, his last day is such and such a day. What are you talking about? Oh, he's going to Savannah for college. And then, boom, you're gone. Yep. You know, or it may have been you already going to college, and you were just coming home for the summer or something like yeah. that. Um, and so now I look at you. And you still a failure. <laughs> well, you've made great successes in your life. And so I'm glad you said that because you can look at it in one set of eyes mm-hmm. or the other. You can look at the things that you have yet to accomplish, mm-hmm. or you can reflect and say, you know what? I have come a long oh, yeah. way from where I was. Yeah. I think about that a lot of time, you know, when I'm, especially when I'm talking to teenagers that have no idea what they want to do with the rest of their life. Um, nerd alert, I don't either, and I'm yeah. 32. But, you know, I, I started college right out of high school, had no idea what I wanted to do. I went for one semester, and then I quit. And then I, I quit for a whole semester. And I know my mother was, like, about to rupture. Cause See, she, I did that in the fifth grade. <laughs> so same feeling my mom had. Uh, probably a little different. Yeah, but. probably just a little <laughs> I wasn't huffing free on. But, oh, uh, there you go. Sorry. Oh, you um, jerk. Yeah. Anyway, but I know, you know, she was about to die. She never let on like she was. But for a whole semester, I was just aimless, totally. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm going back to school. Still didn't know what I wanted to do, 
but I just started that that snowball. I pushed it off the hill. Yeah. And now I look back, I'm like, oh my word, Where'd I've life come go? a long way yeah. from there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Not that I've got it figured out because I don't, but I did go to college for like eight years. Yeah. Well, you you go and you stick with the plan. Sure. As a young person, it's easy to get derailed by well, impatience. Yeah. Well, I got motivated by progress, mm-hmm. you know, or the, at least the idea of it. So you're a progressive. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. You, I, I get motivated motivated by progress when mm-hmm. I see something working out. But sure. that's that's the tricky thing with the gospel, man. Mm-hmm. When, when you let the Lord do something in your life, you know, we always talk about that prodigal son. Mm-hmm. Um, he had no idea what it was going to cost him. He had no clue. He wasted his substance with riotous living. We really talk about how he had no idea how much... Mm-hmm. You know what? What's the old song? Sin will take you farther than yeah, you, you want to go. go. It'll it'll cost you more than yeah. you want to pay. You know we talk about how people go out in sin, and it's just totally beyond recognition when they come back. Well, there's a flip side to that. Sure. When you are at your lowest point in life, especially where I was, whenever I gave my heart to to God, but let's liken it to the prodigal son. You're sitting in a hog pen fixing to eat what they would eat. Mm-hmm. And you just say, you know what? Even in, in his mind, his preconceived ideas, I'm going to go back to my father's house yeah. and I'm going to tell him I just want to be a servant because right. I know he's not going to accept me in any other form yeah. or fashion. But and, and that's okay. Yeah. I just want to go be a servant. Exactly. Because they've got it better than I do right now. For sure. But in his mind, he was always already saying there's no way yeah, that I could be that me. good. Yeah. Yeah. And then we see the father waiting on him, Sees and I him love coming that. Coming a long way off. Yep, but far off. And I love that about Christ because not only does the devil take you farther than you want to go, mm-hmm. but the gospel of Jesus Christ, what He does to a heart and life, will take them further than they ever thought was possible sure. in the right direction. Yeah. And so that's why it's good to stop and reflect. Man, you know what? I am on the right track. I am on the right path. Yes. I think a lot of people get derailed because they don't take time to stop and reflect of how good God's been to them sure. and how far they've come. It's not yes. it's not a bad thing every once in a while, Ryan, to stop and pat yourself on the back and go, you There's know what, I'm doing okay. That. Yes. If you're yep. constantly beating yourself yeah. over the head, you won't make it. I thought about that a lot, you know, when I was an 18-year-old or, or something, you know, teenager. And I was spiritually just kind of, going along, just trying to stay afloat. And I would remember, you know, the Lord would speak to me and say, you're doing, you're doing okay. Just keep, keep on the path that you're on. Yeah. You know, and I think God is the same way, just like the, the father of that prodigal son. The second that you turn your face toward God, he is saying, come on, come on, come buddy. on. Come on. It doesn't matter. It, melts it, his heart. Do, it doesn't matter the distance that you are from him. If your if your attention is turned in his direction, he is pleading for you to come. Mm-hmm. That's so true. Yeah, that's so true. And on your way back to the Father, no matter how far you you nah. you've walked, take time to realize, hey, I'm not where I, I might I might not be where I need mm-hmm. to be, but I'm headed in the right direction. Right. And like I said, I'm going to just reiterate: there's so many people that get. Um, they get gridlocked sometimes. They get mm-hmm. uh, stopped in their tracks because they're not where they want to be. Right. But if you're headed in the right direction, you're you're going where you need to go. Sure. And I, I testified one time, and you uh, you will well remember it. Um, and I testified and said, "I'm not on the mountaintop, but I know how to get there." Yeah. And you're not always going to be on the mountaintop, but don't forget the way there. Don't yeah. forget how to get there. You're right. And if, if you're not there, get the climate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, um, I think I think it's okay to get away for a little while and reflect. Sure. Um, matter of fact, um, this week, the week that this airs, I will be away. Uh, people won't be able to communicate with me, and I've signed up to do a spiritual getaway, I, I guess you this. call it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and so people won't even be able to contact me for several days. So don't worry about Amy. She's going to be totally okay. <laughs> She's going to be really good. Um, 
but I want this, you know, uh, I'm obviously speaking to my future self. I yeah. want I want it to be a a time of reflection. Sure. And then also, if you, if you can get a good aspect of where you've been, you can get a better understanding of where you're headed. Yep. And if, where you want to end up. And where you want to end up. Yeah. I want to I want to I want to end up at the end of my life. And I don't say this to to make anybody think that I'm spiritual. I'm as spiritual as I am right now. Okay, whether yeah. whether you think I'm super spiritual or whether yeah. you think I'm not spiritual, I'm not going to change for anybody. Mm-hmm. However, I say this in all sincerity. At the end of the life, wherever I am, if I'm 35, if I'm 31, or if I die next week, mm-hmm. okay? Or if you're 91. Or if I'm 91. Or if I'm Jimmy Carter and can survive yeah. like 10 different types of cancer and that's still gonna, live. That's going to be me, <laughs> yeah, with your genes, I got probably ten years left. <laughs> but at the end of life, whenever that is, mm-hmm. I really just want to end up in the arms of Christ. Yeah, that, uh, that's really all. That's it. No matter when it happens, life will be a total failure if I don't. Yeah, I don't want to get to the end of life and look back with regret. I know that you will. You know, I know that. You know, even now when we reflect, as we're advising everyone to do. You'll look back on things and say, "Man, I didn't handle that good. I wish I could do that over again." You know yeah. how often do we say, "If you could go back and, and do it all over again, would you? Would you? Or or wouldn't you?" And uh, there's a lot of things that I wish I could redo. Yeah. However, I can't. Yeah. And I've got to I've got to use that as fuel to make the the right decision next time. And uh, that's life, you know. We say a lot of time, don't get so busy with a life that you forget to live. Exactly. You know? And that sounds funny, but it's the truth. How often do we get bogged down in that rut of life? And, Too often. And, and year after year, it's going by. You say, man, I haven't moved a bit yeah. in the direction that I wanted to. I think the world gets in that rut because by 2021, we should have already had spaceships and, <laughs> you know... Uh, Every every family should have a personal airplane where they could fly back sure. into the country. Oh, it's coming! <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. We're just gonna push, <laughs> kick the uh, the can down the road. Yep. But take take some time this week and reflect on on where you've been, where you're at, and where you're headed. And if you don't like the direction that your life's going, hey, there's a man named Jesus Christ, and he'd love to change your future. Yes, sir. And if you need uh, some special time with the Lord and reflecting. Deer season just started, so (laughs) find you a tree to climb and enjoy God's creation. We love you. We hope you have a great week over and under.